All right, we are back with more assembly, and today we're going to put on that little RGB um, LED decoder there. It's a purpose-built IC. Uh, as we go through this, I've been purposefully not using, you know, what I would say are the, the right tools, the, the fancy tools, you know, like this little uh, Heiko, you know, SMD picker-upper, because the chances of you guys having something like this at home are slim to none. Instead, I've been using my wife's eyebrow tweezers. Uh, she doesn't need to know where those are. I've been using a dental pick that I've affixed a weight to as a hold down, right? This isn't anything fancy or schmancy. This is something I took apart and I'm just using it as dead weight. Um, it's a solder lug that I had left over from when I did some repairs on my electrical main right? Um, th there's nothing fancy about this. I could very easily have just gotten a handful of coins and, you know, electrical taped them to uh, a bent piece of paper clip. It doesn't have to be fancy. Uh, really what I'm trying to get across here. I'm also, I mean, my soldering station isn't that fancy, but even as it stands, I'm using a tip that is purposefully bigger than I would normally use to kind of correspond to what most people have at home, which is a soldering iron with a single tip, just kind of a general purpose tip. So with that, let's see if we can't, um, can't get going. I am using something that is expensive. I mean, I, it's, in the realm of expensive things, it's not that expensive. I want to say it's like three, four hundred dollars. But I'm using a fancy trinocular microscope for two reasons. One, so I can show you what I'm doing uh, a little bit better than than just this overhead cam. But even this lens is, you know, fancy. But the reason I'm using it is I can't see these pins with my naked eye anymore. My eyesight is just not good enough. There's no way I could solder this without the help of some external magnification. I would have to use a magnifying glass. Uh, I would have to use something. I, I just can't do it. So the plan today is to see if we can't get this affixed and soldered. And then after that, we'll do a separate video where I'll attach the RGB encoders and the switches. And then this board is mostly ready to go. Um, my USB connector here, I don't know if I'm going to burn one or not. As you saw, I had an issue with this earlier. Um, my USB is non-functional, so I don't know if I'm going to waste a, a connector soldering that on or not. We'll we'll see. Might do it for looks, uh, just on the one. Anyhow, so the first thing I'm going to do is figure out how to get into this bad boy. Should be easy enough. I just need to get the plastic film up and out of the way. And then we'll move over to the microscope view, which I think is this button. Yep, here we go. So let's get everything lined up. And then in focus. All right, so you can see that these pads are pre-tinned. That wasn't on purpose. Uh, I, I was tinning my soldering iron a little bit ago um well, this was in a previous video and i happened to let a solder ball fall off and it covered these tins so i used some uh solder wick to remove the solder and then i went ahead and tinned both sides because i figured you know regardless of what happens i'd probably be better off having things symmetrical than having them one side or the other so here's where the wife's clippers come into play and I already oh man this is why those little fancy tools are sometimes uh, handier you end up with less stress in your life you'll notice a pin one indicator right there that corresponds with the pin one footprint indicator right there so I'm just gonna move this around and show you what that looks like and then I'm gonna put something down to hold it in place. But this part's just gonna go on just like that. 
uh, and then we'll start working it in place. I don't want to fight this, so I've got a tiny, tiny little bit of poster tack that I'm going to get off of my tweezers and hopefully onto the board and then get the part moved into place. Okay. Could also use a little bit of super glue, I suppose, but this way it is removable if it ever needs to be. I'm gonna add a little bit of tinning flux. Now, if I was really, I guess I could have used a little more poster tack. It's moving a little. If I was really trying to do this the easy way, I wouldn't even be futzing around with the hand soldering iron at all. I'd be using uh, hot air or a reflow oven. This is perhaps the most challenging part. And I am not at all looking forward to it. So let's get ready, get comfortable, pull up. chair and let's tell you what let's tin the tip here so right now I'm just melting a ton of solder on it and then I'm gonna wipe every single bit of that off if you have a shiny clean tip it's gonna conduct heat well you're gonna have less fights all right there's one pin Gonna go around, move it to where it's comfortable to work on. Grab another corner. Solder paste and a reflow oven is what this stuff was meant for, not stick solder. Two pin. And my point with those is just to keep this thing from moving around. Um, very difficult to solder a moving target. Three pin. Four pin and a possible bridge. Uh, yeah, definite bridge. See how solder has linked those two pins together? that creates a short circuit. Now, it's not the end of the world. Um, in fact, I, I fully expect to get more of those just because this is an impossibly small um, part with a very large tip, uh, but I will show you how to fix those. One of the tricks is to have tiny, tiny, tiny amounts of solder. And just let it get sucked right off your tip. And then I'm trying to pull everything out. I don't think that I'm done. Um, I, I don't know if any of those are attached or not. I, I would tend to say no, but I have the corners attached and that is good enough for this first pass. I did tin those pads, although, albeit uh, unintentionally, and a lot of that solder that's there is what I'm able to melt and stick these pins with. All that extra flux I added is helping things. Oh, 
in this case that capacitor is definitely in the way probably should have put that on last but I can rotate things and maybe figure it out going to retin here and then wipe it all away and even under magnification I'm having trouble seeing what I'm doing here uh oh there's a big fat bridge whoops okay well that was bound to happen how do you deal with something like that and the answer is with braid solder braid so you put the braid on top of the part and you want to make sure you have clean braid you're not reusing it it doesn't reuse well and you just heat her up and the solder will flow into the braid at which point you can remove it whoops I didn't remove it quick enough there we go okay now let's see if we can't take advantage of Mr. Schmancy scope which obviously doesn't have infinity optics which would be nice but what are you going to do Okay, so we can see the difference between some pads that have fillets on them and some that are just sitting on the surface. So in this case, the magnification really helped um, because these pins, I was about to call them pads, they're pins, aren't connected at all. They're just sitting on top. But a little magnification really helps break through that... Uh, All right, so I wonder if I can improve that image quality at all for you. Whoops. We are hyper-focused, so any little movement's going to be a booger. I want those pads, the land pads at the bottom, to be connected to the pins on top. see where we're at and I really really want a smaller tip here but I'm punishing myself. Oh, and I wasn't even on screen. I tell you. So I have four down on one side, four to go. There's still plenty of flux. big fat solder bridge so I'm gonna go ahead and finish up making sure all those pads are attached and then I'm just gonna suck that extra solder off might as well back out where it's a little easier to view see that big old ugly solder bridge right there on the left hand side connecting pins 11 and 12 yuck 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 all right so let's fix it problems are solvable.
they're just temporary. I need to get an oblique microscope so that you guys can see a little bit more what I see. I've also got a cat here. Thanks, cats. And a little bit more there. Okay. Now, we've got little baby fillets, or fillets, on the bottom of those. You can see pins 9 through 16 here. Um, little extra solder on pin 15. Not too much. It doesn't really matter as long as we don't have a short circuit and I don't think there's enough to risk messing it up. So now let's flip it around and do the other side there. Oh, where is it? Somewhere around in there. All right, so here we see pins one through eight uh, of those through the microscope now it looks like uh, pin seven's a little suspect I don't know let's zoom in here certainly did better on this side because we didn't have that capacitor to work around actually they're all, I would say serviceable. Um, I'm gonna apply some heat at six and seven there. Remelt those. I need to get back on screen. I have a jig that would hold all of this firmly in place that I am not using because I'm an idiot. I'm not proving any points or anything, it's just I forgot to do it until about 30 seconds ago. <laughs> oh well. So I'm just touching up the joints. Make sure that the solder between the pin and the land pad has a chance to melt and I'm sure it does okay it's on now what would make this easier there's no way I could do it without the um, without the desoldering braid I'm sure regardless of what I used even just the slightest you know, movement of my wrist or, or hand or shakiness or whatever would cause a problem. So the solder braid, I would say, is pretty critical here. Um, but man, I wish I had applied that capacitor later, not now. Anyways, um, that is probably the most challenging part on the board, and that is the last part on the board. So next up, it is time to back off and look at... Uh, let's get back to an overview. So now it's time to back off and look at applying the switches. And you know something? That video was so short, I think I'm just going to do it. Um, a couple things I want to point out, too. I had to short my diodes just with pieces of wire I took from a, a power cord. I just stripped and put it in. The Those things, first of all, two reasons. One, we're not having you use them in your design. They're too small. Uh, we believe for you to solder but the second and most important reason they're still not in I don't know where they are uh, they're coming from a online source uh, that's sold through DigiKey but it's not DigiKey so I can't really track them effectively anyhow what we're gonna do here is make sure that the pins are not folded over and get them inserted here. 
right? Then on the back side, I'm just going to give each one a little bend over. You might have to do that with a tool so I don't break a nail. Um, yeah. Hopefully, usually this trick works. It doesn't always, but sometimes it works. That if you bend these things over, it's enough to hold the part in. So you don't have to worry about it falling out. See? Clever, clever toilet lever, as my dad used to say. Unfortunately, that makes removal difficult, if not impossible. Because then you have to heat it up, yank it out. Um, so it does make desoldering more difficult. So keep that in mind. If you ever think you're going to want to swap out pins, you don't want to use this trick. There is another trick I can show you. Um, but bending over the pins isn't the trick you want to use. Instead, the thing you want to do is get them all installed and just put something over the top. Like a book, a piece of wood. I mean, it doesn't really matter. Just something flat that covers the whole area. Piece of foam, if you have it, uh, might work. Amazon shipping box. Small gerbil. I mean, no, I'm kidding. Don't use pets. All these different switches have different mechanical characteristics. come in different colors that indicate what kind of switch they are. You can get them. Oh. Do I come up one switch short? That's okay. I've got plenty more. Oh, I remember what happened. Number 10 there was damaged. All right, so I've got all 10 installed, although that is not a requirement of the trick. The trick is you just take something big and flat, set it on top, and flip them all over together. That's the trick. Then it's just a matter of coming behind and heating them up and tying them all in. of them are falling out there on me. For the ones that still have pins f sitting through, I will catch those so I don't have to fight the reinstallation. And then I will have to go reinstall. could do with some thicker solder but 
Not the end of the world. So let me finish up those that uh, are handy. I'm going to flip over to the microscope cam so that you can see what I'm doing. And then I will go through and install the rest of the switches for you. So, not the right button, not the right button. Hmm. Ah, uh, yep. There we go. So here's the the ones where I used the bender over trick. You don't actually have to um, fill the whole s the the entire hole with solder, although without the microscope, I would because I wouldn't be able to see what I was doing careful enough otherwise. You just have to tie it in to the other side, right? That would be sufficient. Um, just as long as the pin's tied to the, the wall, it'd be fine. But since I probably wouldn't be able to see it, I would probably want something that looked like this a little better. So it starts to rise up the, the side of the, um, the size of the pin, the side of the pin. This is too much solder. You don't really need that much. It's not really worth taking it away. Um, just as long as you have a shiny joint, you're good. I'm just going to heat that and let the solder work its way around a little. Okay, again, I am filling in the solder on the ones that could use it. And for the ones that can't, I will replace those pins. Get those out of the way. Where is this one? Okay, that is theoretically sufficient. But I'm going to add a little bit more. All right, let's fix these. Remember, you don't want to leave your iron in contact with the part for more than five seconds. That's the max. Then you need to pull over, regroup, try again. Let things cool down a little. Now, you can always go through and add these things one at a time. Nothing wrong with that. It's still going to go fast enough that it's not a problem.
there's alignment holes um, there's a central alignment that's going to help hold this in place there's a couple other holes I don't really know what they're for the four holes down at the bottom are if you want to insert a light an LED in the switch itself that's actually uh, how keyboard designers do it they don't do what we did with the LEDs mounted on top they actually do reverse mount LEDs from the bottom where those four holes are it would just be uh, some pads and a hole and the LED would mount backwards and it would shine through the board up through this hole and into the keycap but see how that's centrally located so you could put a LED right in the middle there there's even have RGB LEDs if you don't if you want more than one color um, you know there's four pins so you can have a common as well as a pin for each color all sorts of neat stuff about keyboards that I didn't know before we started this adventure together this is fun though we're making progress hopefully you guys are not experiencing too high a level of frustration with your boards if you do if things get frustrating and you want to rush to get it done you need to stop and come back at it another time when you've got more sleep under your belt or you've got more mental energy to devote to the task life is complicated it's especially complicated right now with this global pandemic that we're all in year two of. Um, I don't want this to be a source of frustration in your life. That isn't the reason we're doing this course. We're doing this course so that you can learn things, that you can escape a little. This is a course away from news and away from politics. Okay, two switches left and then the RGB encoders and we are ready to test this before we plug it in I don't know yet what should I do about that USB should I or that's the RGB but should I install it yeah you know something let me show you how to install the USB I'll burn one it's gonna be useless but Okay. Gonna have to find them. I don't know. Not knowing where they are might be motivation enough for me to not put it on can't remember if I left them in their packaging or if I moved them to parts bins. Last one. Then it's the RGB encoders. Okay. 
RGB encoder. And there's number two. So I'm putting these things on last because, um, let's switch cameras again here. What did I just hit? Hopefully nothing important. Is this it? Okay. I'm putting these things on last because these are the tallest and, uh, if I put these on at any other time in this build, they would they would elevate the board at a weird angle above the uh, the work surface. And things could fall out of the board when I soldered. So not much to it. I'm just going to This is a spot where I would probably use thicker solder, but I'm only going to suggest you guys buy a thin size and use it, so I'm going to do that too. Come on. I thought I was going to have to go back to the uh, microscope just so I could see <laughs> where the solder was. I really am getting old, it seems. Man, oh man. As I was telling you in another video, I've got a buddy who can naked eye solder like 0402s. I, I can't. That's not me. I don't know if I can even safely do these pins. I can see the pads, but I can't see the pins inside them. Hmm. You can kind of see them on the screen. Now well, let's do these big ones here. We'll do them this way and then I'll flip over. I'm cheating and using a video monitor. Although I, c I can see the um, the holes and the the uh, the pins just fine. I can't see the solder in real life. I can't see where it's going. I can see light flashing off of it. But down at the end where there's no light to reflect, I can't really see if I'm hitting the hole or if I'm hitting near the hole. All right. Where is this? About there.
this back up. And we're there. We're getting there. Two more. And I need to back off. So, I've got a lump of solder down at the bottom that I'm kind of using just to make sure my surface stays metallic and hopefully unoxidized. And that also helps heat transfer. So if you ever need to, just back off and you can come at it. Okay. With the exception of my useless USB port. We're done. We need to clean it up. And I'll do that with some isopropyl. Um, get all the cat hair and the schmutz off. And then it's time to bring up the board. I'm going to test to make sure there's no shorts between power and ground and then try my luck at plugging it in and seeing if the Pico is still recognizable by the computer, you know. Um, but there's plenty of schmutz and all of that flux will over time destroy this board. So I don't want to leave it on. I want to clean it off. Uh, if you have an old toothbrush and some isopropyl alcohol, that's a very easy way to do it. Wish me luck. I'll see you guys at the next round.